Welcome everybody to another episode of BNM Fishing and Crappie Magnets Fish Eat Live series, where today we're coming to you from the volunteer state of Tennessee. Today we'll be fishing Percy Priest Lake for incredible summer crappie. We will be eating delicious fried crappie street tacos with an array of delicious condiments. And we'll be living with the family and friends of BNM Pro Staff Manager Kent Driscoll. Dexter McCluster. Woo! What's up, what's up? Run DMC in the house. Yeah, no Dexter and I don't miss together. Howdy tight. Yeah, howdy tight. Maybe the NFL. Buddy Will, just graduated from UT. Will, what's up, man? Congratulations, man. Yeah, yeah. Congrats, man. Here's my daughter, Mary Kent, We call her MK. Yeah. 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 Her boyfriend, Tyler. Yeah. 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 But before all that eating happens, we've got to get to catch it. So give me a thumbs up if you're ready to sore lip them all on Percy Priest Lake with the incredibly successful professional crappie tournament angler, Kent Driscoll. Reeling them in, yeah, Percy man. Priest style. Slip bobber action. Beautiful. All right, real simple setup. Got a small number four rim hook, small hook, okay? Yep. I like the small hook, kind of hides the minnow, clear water, swims around, gets around in the brush better, right? All right, got about a 12 to 14 inch leader here. And what kind of line? All right, this is gamma clear, okay? Yeah. I've got a quarter ounce barrel swivel, or not barrel swivel, but barrel sinkler. Yeah. Okay, run the line through it four times and peg it, just like a Carolina rig. Okay. Okay. This is a knot head tackle slip float and if you'll notice it's got a brass fitting you see that brass fitting mm -hmm. that's the key to this float that float goes up and down on your line a lot quicker it slides easier slides because easier. of the brass fitting plastic so slide slower right right okay yep all right there's my bead now that bead's a little bit bigger than your normal bead because I don't want it to go through the tip of the pole makes sense you got me yeah all right and then I've got two bobber stoppers on here you have to look real close right here here we got them. There's your bobber stoppers. And notice two. I got two so they don't slide. Why is that? Okay. Well, when you're setting a hook on a fish deep, you know, I'm fishing about 12 feet with a slip float, these bobber stoppers have a tendency to slide. And that's why I put two of them on there. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. So I can fish all day with two beads and never have to put a new bobber stop on. Got it. And there's your end result there. You know, there's about, that's probably a 10 and a half inch crop you got there. Let's eat it. Yeah, man. Welcome aboard. 11 inch crappie. Nice. Welcome to Crisco Lake. You know what we're going to do tonight, Kirby? Have a fish fry? We are. I am going to take these crappie. I'm going to cut them in long strips about an inch wide. Yeah. About four to six inches long. Yeah. I'm gonna batter them in a beer batter. Okay. We're doing fish tacos. Ooh, fish yeah. tacos, I love yeah. it. Mango salsa. Yeah. Yep. Ooh, I like that. We're gonna have a little, um, we're gonna take a little coleslaw. Uh-huh. That real fine angel hair coleslaw. Okay. I'm gonna marinate the coleslaw in a little bit of uh, red vinaigrette dressing, just a little bit, yeah. give it a little zip. Okay. Okay. And uh, I'm getting hungry now. Yeah, man. And then we're gonna put a little salsa, a little cheese, and uh, it's gonna be like uh, street tacos, man, with crap. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, baby. Got my jig. I did. I see you. I see you. Oh, he's got it. I see you. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to switch over to the flip bobber. Nicely done. <laughs> Drop it straight down, dude. Oh, look what I got. I got a magnolia. Oh, you did. Look yep. at that. Isn't that cool? Ah, oh, those are so pretty and, and fairly rare, aren't they? Yeah. Well, they stock them in here. Yeah. And uh, Look at that racing stripe. See that stripe on him? I call them the SS. Yep. Super sport. I don't think he's a keeper. No. Nope. Man, isn't he pretty? Yeah. Look, he's got a piece on his nose. You see it? Yeah. On, on his lip right there. It's like it took a Sharpie to him. Yeah. Somebody collared him up. Oh, I'm right. right in him right now. Come on. Get to one, dude. Oh, you're right there. Oh, 
There he is. Kirby! <laughs> My man! Popeye jigging it! Uh oh, you got a white crappie. I did. I love it. Popeye jig, man. Yeah. Uh -huh. Here's the pile uh -huh. laying on the bottom, and there's a tall piece. You see the tall like piece? It's like a pine tree setting straight up. Yeah. And, I mean, but you see the fish, and you the sun is in the east over here, so I think what's happening is uh -huh. these fish are getting on the shady side Makes of, sense. of the tall yeah. piece. Oh, right. Nice. right. And when we get the bait right on them, can't resist it. And you know what? Every brush pile you fish has got a sweet spot. Yeah. And man, when you find that sweet spot, it is like game on. Yeah. So we're catching them on Popeye jigs. We're catching them on minnows. Uh, you're doing it a little bit more efficiently than me with the slip bobber. How did how, you love this? How did you get started in slip bobber fishing? What was your or who yeah, taught so. you this or? You know what, believe it or not, my, my mamma. So my grandmother, when I was a kid, yeah, I would go to my grandmother's house and spend the summers. Yeah. And I'd stay up there for three months. And we fished every day, Monday through Friday. And we fished for bass, crappie, brim, catfish. You know, we we uh, we went and got catapa worms for catfish. I would go at night and get Canadian night crawlers for catfish. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but back then, we had a bait shop that sold red fin minnows. Red fin minnows? You ever heard of a red fin? No. You don't even hardly hear about them anymore. What a, what a, and, what's their characteristic? Well, their fins are red, okay? okay? But they're very, very, very aggressive. And when you would put them in a bucket, uh -huh. okay? Like a styrofoam bucket, and that's all we had back then. Woohoo! Slip bobber. Yep. <laughs> that's all we had back then? Yeah. They would actually hit the sides of that. Of that uh, Run into the sides of, the, of that foam. Um, minnow bucket. Right. And look here, this fish has been caught before. He's not a keeper. So he's oh, mouse torn. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to let him go again. So, anyways, we um, we fished with these redfin minnows as a kid. And believe it or not, my grandma had some BM retractable poles that would retract. And we would rig them with the slip float and that, that, that red fin minnow. And I gotta tell you, there was nothing more exciting to me as a kid to watch that slip float go under. Oh gosh, kids love bobber fishing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I, I mean, who doesn't love bobber So this fishing? is this is something you've done as a kid, not you learned yeah, in a life. tournament or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, and I kinda, you know, the funny thing is, I kinda, you know, as I progressed in tournament fishing and all that kind of stuff, uh -huh. You know, I got into the trolling and pulling crankbaits and all that stuff, man, which I absolutely love. But, 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 when, but it's when, just you, go, yeah. when it's just you out here alone. Right, when, when I'm out here by myself, yeah. and especially with live scope now, and since I've moved to Nashville and I've really gotten into this brush pile fishing, because this is the way you got to fish around here to catch them yeah. consistently. You got to fish, fish around brush piles. And you got to work at it. And uh, anyways, um, that's kind of where my love for, for cork fishing came from. Huh. Slip float fishing was I did it so much as a kid, and we caught so many fish when I was a kid in these private farm ponds. It was ridiculous. Really? Yeah. Oh, we got to fish ponds that never had never seen baits before. And huh. uh, man, you talk about cool, dude. It was just so cool. I'm, I'm I'm blessed, man, to have that kind of lifestyle and have grandparents like that. that uh, oh, yeah. yeah, man, that introduced me to fishing at a really young age, and it's, it just stuck with me, man. I mean, it, it it really has, and you know, kind of the cool thing too about it. Is oh, John Harrison? I got you know, one coming up on my my fishing partner. You know, um, he was the same way. He fished with his grandmother. I never fished a day with my grandmother. Yeah. I played golf with him and we hunted quail, but we we didn't fish. That was my grandmother's thing. And she had two you know older ladies that she hung out with. They wore straw hats and and uh, and they fished together. And I went with these you know these ladies when I was a kid. I'm telling you, it was some of the best times I've ever had. And, you know, kind of, yeah, and it kind of, you know, that's kind of why I'm so passionate about taking kids fishing and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. It's just, man, it's fun. And, and, it, and it's just exciting, man. It's, it's really exciting to uh, to get out here and, and get to fish and, you know, slip float, bobber fish, man. Anybody can bobber fish. I'll just tell you that right now. Anybody can do it. What kind of... Uh... Apparatus is that? What is that for? I've never seen that on a boat. You're spooking me. This isn't like a medical exam, is Open it? Open wide, Kirby. <laughs> what are we doing with that? That's a trash picker upper. Okay, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, for like the yeah. people along the roads to pick so, that stuff up. 
for us old guys that don't want to bend over to pick up our buoys. Ah. Bring you a four foot trash picker upper. Go past your buoy. And guess what? Reach over that is it. a pretty handy dandy tip. Safety. Yeah. Yeah, That's see. a safety thing. All yeah, right. Next, Tournament trip. Next to moving my around, moving around. You got to pick your buoy up quick. Move on to the next spot. Next on my list of purchases. Put together a nice little stringer. Yeah, man. We've got 30 plus right now. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad day. Did you get one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, double it up. Yeah, baby. I'll keep my... Here you go. Take him off for me. <laughs> I'll pose with you. There you go. <laughs> that was a double double. What's the limit here? <laughs> we might be uh... 30 per person. Oh, 30 will. Hell, we got at least 20. I like this fishing. Woo. Starting to get a little wavy out here in the afternoon. Yeah. They're like the perfect size. I like catching those great, you know, big ones, those 15 plus inch ones. Yeah. But man, when it comes to eating, God knows these fish is good. I feel guilty eating a fish that big, you know what I mean? Yeah, I do too sometimes, especially in the spring, you know. The uh, B and M uh, checker. Yeah. Uh, that you check the fish on. Yep. It has that little age bracket thing where it'll tell you how old a fish is. Yep. And those 15 and 16 inches are I know. seven and eight, nine years old. I know, isn't that crazy? Uh, yeah. Well, that's only a couple of years older than, younger than my kid. I feel guilty. And in Kansas, they're few and far between. They're not like down in Mississippi and Tennessee where you guys catch them regularly like that. Well, the growing, the growing uh, season down there is longer. Yeah. And there's, it's, there's more nutrition in the water. Yeah. And there's more shad, and it's just more fertile as a whole. There you go. That bite. Booyah, kasha. That was the slow sinking bite. Oh, yeah. And I got a hyper striper. Hyper striper. But, uh, yeah, those fish don't grow near as fast here as they do, like, down in some of those Mississippi parks. You know, I lived in Memphis for 15 years. Dang it. I'm going over their backs or I'm getting... Nope, that was a bite. Look at that. My skirt's pulled down. I lived down there 15 years and fished those lakes religiously. Yeah. God, you talk about spoiled, man. Damn, I was spoiled. You'd catch a 16-incher every day, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and the number of three-pound crop you used to catch, it just it'd scare you, dude. <laughs> yeah. Scary. I've been down there a couple times. 10 hour drive from where I'm out from in Kansas City. But it was worth it. That was a 
bite because my potato was messed up. I'm predicting a fish on this cast. Call him my shot like Babe Ruth. Here we go. Do it, man. There he is. <laughs> do it, do it. Nice one. This is an, I'm going to play this one out. This is one of the nicer Come ones. Come on, I've man. On. Let's see what you got. That's a big crop. I want to see what Kirby's got here. I got a dip net. You got a dip net? I might need a net on this. You get big crop in here? Maybe this is a small cat or a bat. Here he comes, he's coming right to you. Oh, 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 oh. Is that a, that's a big crappie. That's a big, big crappie. Oh, I called that shot, dude. Good job, dude. Look at that Whoa. hog. There you go, hang on. Get the hook up there. Dude! <laughs> Percy Priest! <laughs> oh my gosh. That's a, above average that's a trophy fish. Yeah, let me see. That's a nice <laughs> On the crappie magnets. Hey, let's measure them real quick. Crappie's okay. going real. I say 15. 15 on the money. 15 and a quarter. Put him back here. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how to weigh. I never weighed big crappie. I don't, I don't catch enough of them. Maybe uh, 1.8? You can be close to a pound and a half. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Man, thank you, Heavenly Father, for letting us catch a trophy right fish like that. Here you go. Come on. Come on. Come alive. I know you want to come alive. There he goes. He going down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good job. Great day of fishing. Wrapped up with a phenomenal burger yeah. at the local marina. Four Corners Marina and Restaurant. Percy Priest. Oh my gosh. And a celebratory beer. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you so much. Kent Driscoll. Hey, folks. Crappie Kirby and I have had a great day today out here on Percy Priest. We're wrapping up the show. I don't know how many crappie we've got in this live well. Probably close to 40. And uh, I tell you, today was all about the fish eat live lifestyle. We had a great day. We whacked, we stacked. We're gonna go home, we're gonna clean fish. Stay tuned for crappie tacos tonight at the Driscoll's. Woohoo! I'm excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Hey folks, I'm coming back to you with uh, our setup today and how we were uh, setting our poles up. We were fishing two different styles. I was fishing a, uh, a long pole, which is the B&M Duck Commander Series. I uh, was using an 11 foot rod and uh, I've got it paired with the B&M Pro 100 reel right here. We make this pole in a 10, 11, and a 12 foot length, and the pole itself is a stiff action. And I prefer a stiff action when I'm using a slip float because a lot of times I'm fishing deeper and I need a really good hook set. When you look at the pole itself, we call it the double touch series because it's got two double touch notches that are cut in this Portuguese cork handle right here. And you can actually hold your finger in that notch where your finger actually touches the pole. So what that does is increases the sensitivity and helps you feel these bites. This is my go-to pole for jig fishing and also fishing with the slip float. Um, again, stiff action. It also has some depth rings on it in one foot increments so you can tell how deep you're fishing. It's got the Dynaflow guide so the line goes through the guides real easy. And uh, I tell you what, it's an all around just fantastic multi-use jig pole. Now, as far as the, the rest of the setup, we're using six pound clear line and I'm using a slip float. And if you'll look here, pretty close. The way we rig this float is number one we put a bobber stopper on the line okay 
And I have got an example of the bobber stoppers right here. They actually come on a little ring. And what you do is you run your line through this ring right here and you slide that bobber stopper up on the line, okay? And if you look real close, I've got two bobber stops on. That way I can fish all day long and my bobber stoppers don't get worn down and start slipping on me, which causes my, my depth to adjust. I wanna be very, very critical and set my bait at the exact depth all the time. So I slide the bobber stoppers on first. In this situation, I got two. Then I've got a little bitty bead right here, all right? So that you put your bead on next. And again, that bead slides up and down your line, okay? Now, when you wanna adjust your depth, all I do is grab the bead and slide it up the line, pushing my bobber stopper. So that's how you adjust your depth, up and down. The actual float itself, these come from knot head tackle. And I want you to look real, real close because this float has got a brass insert. If you look real close, the brass insert is the key to the float because your line goes through that brass easier and it slides up and down your line a little bit easier. So as you're fishing during the day, sometimes your line gets a little bit of memory in it, all right? You want this float going up and down your line very, very freely. The next piece is a real simple quarter ounce egg weight. If you look real close here, you're gonna see that I ran the line through that egg weight four times and I pegged it, okay? Real simple. Now, the next piece of it is, I'm using a number six hook, small hook. I prefer a small hook when I'm fishing around these brush piles. A couple of reasons, it doesn't get hung up as much. The water's pretty clear out here at Percy Priest so the fish don't see that bigger hook. If you'll look, between the hook and my weight, I've got about a 12 inch leader. It's that simple. That is your basic slip float rig. And the cool thing about it is, I can fish anywhere from a foot deep to 20 foot deep with a slip float rig. Today we were fishing in 18 to 20 foot of water. Most of the time I was fishing 10, 11, and 12 feet. So all I did when I pulled up to a brush pile is I looked at it on live scope, I figured out exactly what depth the fish were, I set my float right at that depth, about six inches above the fish. I opened my bail, I'd underhand pitch it out there, and I'd try to pitch it past the fish, and then I, I would take a quick look at the live scope, and I'd watch my bait go down to that brush pile and make sure I was in the strike zone. And let me tell you, what an effective way to catch crappie on a brush pile. Okay, so that was our first setup right there. Real, real simple slip float rig. Very, very, very effective. You can also rig it with a jig if you want to fish with a jig. Today, I personally was fishing with a straight minnow. Now, my buddy Crappie Kirby. He was mixing it up a little bit today. And I tell you what, he put on quite a show. All right? He was fishing with the B&M Sharp Shooter 6, which is designed for dock shooting and casting. Six foot rod relatively stiff action, okay? Also has the Portuguese cork handle, also has a little touch, the notch right here, what we call it. This is a single touch, okay? Dynaflow guides, the line goes through these guides very, very easily. It is made to shoot docks and also cast. Kirby was casting somewhere between 25 to 40 feet at these brush piles. We also paired it up with a b and Pro 100 reel Again, six pound clear line. Kirby figured it out pretty quick. And let me tell you what he was doing. He would cast out to each brush pile and he would actually let his jig fall to the bottom. And you will see that in the video. That line would actually go limp. Now he would watch his line on the way down and from time to time, he would catch a fish on the fall. But 80% of his strikes happened when he would pump the rod, pull that jig off the bottom reel a couple of times and pump it and then let it fall again. And that's when he was getting his bites. When he would pull that jig up off the bottom and pull it through that brush, that's when he was getting those bites. Man, really, really effective way um, to catch crappie. We, we kind of had a dual attack today. I was using a slip float. I would pitch my slip float out there and actually Kirby would cast towards my slip float because he knew I was looking at the live scope. I knew exactly where the, the brush pile was and he would 
he would look at where my float is and I'd say, hey Kirby, pitch it to the left, pitch it to the right, go past it just a little bit. I would give him a, a tip, he'd cast it out there and bang, man, he was getting bit nonstop, especially later in the day. As, as the sun got up and those fish really got down on the uh, on the brush piles, he, he, I mean, I'm telling you, he was really catching them. Now, here's his setup. Again, very, very simple. He's using a 16th ounce crappie magnet double cross jig head chartreuse, okay? He was also using a crappie magnet. Let me show you how we tie this jig on. So I'm gonna take my line you notice I had to put my glasses on here so I can see. And I, I'm going to run this line through that jig head and pull out about a 10 or 12 inch leader right here. Okay? I'm going to take these two fingers and I'm going to tie a loop knot. So I'm going to make a loop around those two fingers, pinch my line together, let my jig hang down. Okay? Then I'm going to take that jig and I'm going to go through that knot two times. One, two. All right, just feed it through there. Now, I'm gonna cheat a little bit here. I'm gonna wet the knot. You always wanna wet your knot. And then I'm gonna use the eye of the jig and I'm, and I'm gonna pull my, my loop knot down real close to about a quarter of an inch. And when I get real close to the jig head, I'm gonna pull it off there and cinch it. There we go. That is a perfect loop knot right there. It's about a quarter inch in size. I'll trim the tagline real short here in just a minute, but I kind of wanted to give you an idea of how we were tying this jig on, okay? And the reason we use a loop knot is when you cast it out there and it free falls, that jig is just going to slowly sink, and that loop knot allows it to stay at like a 90 degree. And then when you pump it off the bottom and it falls again, it does the same thing. So real basic setup again. Um, really really effective day wow we caught a ton of crappie um i think we kept 46 we're, we're about to cook them here in just a few minutes but uh that's kind of a recap of our setup and what we were doing and uh man these being in poles i'm telling you they were the ticket again today and really helped us put some nice fish in the live well so that's it hope you guys enjoyed our video hope you enjoyed some of the tips hope you hope you enjoyed you know us sharing how we tie these rigs up and, and why we use these different poles. And uh, let me tell you something, tight lines and sore lip them all, folks. Thank you so much for watching Fish Eat Live. Our mission is to demonstrate the benefits of the Fish Eat Live lifestyle. We look forward to educating, entertaining, and attracting you to the healthy lifestyle of the great outdoors. We're definitely going to have some wholesome family fun on the water every Sunday at 6 p.m. So hit that subscription and that notification bell because we want you to come be a part of this.